What's up guys, Zach here from the Chaos Galaxy and today I'm going to be doing a revised version of the rules for my trading card game, the Chaos Galaxy. Now I've already done a rule video for this, however there are a few mistakes in it and I've changed some of the rules since I made that video as it was over a year ago, so I think it's time I did this. And today I'm going to be doing the first part of the video and the next video will be uploaded next week showing you the rest of the rules. So if you don't know how to play this game, definitely pay attention to this video. Um, it is a bit complicated, so it might take you a few watches to actually get used to how to play the game. And then also, if you watch some of the battle videos that I've done with my friends on this YouTube channel, then I'm sure they'll help you learn how to play too. They're probably the next best thing. But for now, enjoy the first part of learning how to play the Chaos Galaxy. So, for a game of Chaos Galaxy, you'll need two players using galaxies or decks of cards um, made up of 35 cards using a combination of creature cards, resource cards, attachment cards and activator cards all of which I'll explain later in this video. You should also have one planet card um, which has the black background and it also says planet there in the corner. And the planet card you should choose depends predominantly on the type of creatures that you're using in your galaxy. So, for example, I'm using a galaxy made up predominantly of Sindel creatures, as you can tell by the planet Sindel there. So I'm using the planet Sindel because that ability works with those creatures. And different planets have different ways of playing the game of Chaos Galaxy, and I'll put a link to a video in the description below which introduces you to all the different planets and how they play. And when you begin a game, you start with your planet card here, and then you draw four cards. So take the top four cards off your galaxy like this and then look at them. Your opponent will do this too. Then you decide which player is going first by doing rock, paper, scissors or tossing a coin or something. And for this example's sake, I'm gonna go first. So after I've drawn my four cards, I will then gain four stars. Now stars are like the currency of the game. You need them to sort of make moves, play cards, because right now in this game, my planet is completely empty and I can't even play any cards yet. So to keep count of stars, you can use anything like pennies or I've just got these counters here which I can use. So there are four counters, meaning four stars, and that's what you get at the beginning of every turn. So to start playing cards, you need to buy zones to play the cards in. Now because there are different types of cards, you need different types of zones to play those cards. For example, creature cards are played in creature zones. Resource cards and activator cards, as you can tell by the resource there, are played in resource zones. And there is a third type of zone, which I'm not going to talk about yet, because that comes in later in the game. Okay, and the first type of any zone you play will cost you two stars. And because I have four, I'm going to pay these two to play a resource zone. Now this is just a makeshift zone um, I made earlier, but... You can always tell resource zones because obviously they say resource zone there. They're also an orangey yellowy colour. And then creature zones are a bluish colour. So because I have a resource zone, I can now play a resource card. But I have two stars left, so I'm going to pay those two to buy a creature zone. And the first of each zone type will cost you two stars, always. And then if you want to buy another one of those zones, it will double in price. So the next resource zone I want to buy will cost me four stars. And if I want to buy another resource zone, it will cost me eight stars and then 16. And then after that, all the zones you buy will cost 20 because I've made a rule where no player can have more than 20 stars at the same time. And if I wanted to buy another creature zone now, then that would cost me another four stars, not 20 or anything because it's just my second type of creature zone. So because I have a resource zone, I'm going to play a resource card called Galaxy's Gift. So I put this in my resource zone, I get its ability, uh, and that reads, you gain two stars. So I get two of my stars back, and then Galaxy's Gift has now been used up, so I take it out of my resource zone, and I put it with my dead cards just above my galaxy here. So now it's still my turn, and I want to play a creature card, because otherwise my opponent will be able to attack. I'll go more into attacking later, but I want to build up some defences by playing a creature card. So, if you look at the creature cards in my hand, as you can see I have two. You can always tell the creature cards because they're the only cards that have stars. And to play a creature card, you must pay stars equal to the stars of that creature. So, I'd like to play Tononon Nononon, but he has four stars and I only have two, so I can't play him. K. 
KO, which is this card, you can't really see, sorry because of that, KO, is an attachment card, so I can't play that either. Now Helder is a two star creature, so I can pay two stars, and then obviously if I had a really strong creature with eight stars or something, I'd have to wait a long time to be able to play that, because its stars are too high. Okay, so now I don't have any stars left, I've played a creature, I can't attack my opponent because it's my first turn, um, so I think I'm just going to end my turn there because I can't really do anything else. And then the turn will pass to my opponent. And they'll begin their turn by drawing one card. So they've now got five. And then they'll gain their four stars and they can perform that move. Okay, so my opponent's deciding to pay two of his four stars to get a creature's own. He's then going to pay one of his remaining two stars to play the one star creature, Aplo, from the planet Gaios. And notice how my opponent is actually using the planet card Gaios too, so they work in combination. He's then deciding to end his turn with one star remaining. So the turn passes back to me. I've got two stars, I've got two cards in my hand, so I'm going to draw one more, and then I'm going to gain my four stars. Now, what I'm going to want to do here is use my Helder to attack his Aplu. And the way creatures attack or battle is by using your creature's power against the opposing creature's health. And if your power is lower than your opponent's creature's health, then you can't attack. Well, actually, you can attack, but your creature would just die. So in most cases, there's no point. So my Helder's 30 power can't beat Aplu's 80 health. So... I'm going to need to use some kind of card to either lower Aplu's health or increase my Helder's. And in my hand, this is the card I just drew, but I have an attachment card, which is KO, which reads, the attached creature's health becomes zero. Now, there are loads of cool things about attachment cards. First of all, they don't cost you any stars to play, so they're like resource cards. Second of all, you can attach them to creatures on either your planet or your opponent's planet, so it doesn't matter who's playing it, it can be played onto any creature on either player's planet. And the final cool thing about them is they don't take up zones at all. If you want to attach an attachment card to a creature, you just play it straight from your hand onto the creature like that, and it uses the same zone as that creature. So, because I want to kill my opponent's Aplu, I'm going to attach the KO to the Aplu, reducing its health from 80 to 0. Now, at this point in the game, my Helder still can't actually kill the Aplu, because for my Helder to attack, I'll need to buy a Battle Zone, which is the final type of zone that you can buy in the Chaos Galaxy. So, because I don't have a Battle Zone yet, I'm going to pay two whoops, to play one, and Battle Zones are green. So, at this point, after I finish playing cards at the start of my turn, like my KO or if I wanted to play another creature, I'll say, right, I'll move all the creatures that I want to attack into battle zones. In this case, it's only a Helder. But if I had another creature in another battle zone, then I'd move that one in too. And then I'll say, right, because your Aplu has zero health, I'm going to attack it with my Helder's 30 power. So the Aplu, which is now dead, would go above my opponent's galaxy with their dead cards. And the KO, because that's mine, this would go into my dead cards. And now I've done all the attacking I can do because creatures can only attack once per turn and Helder will move back from my battle zone into its creature zone. And because I can't do anything else, I've only got two stars, so I can't buy any more zones because they'd all cost four. Um, I can't play any other creatures, so I'm gonna have to end my turn there. So guys, that's all I'm gonna show you for this video. Those were just a few basic turns in an example game of the Chaos Galaxy. Um, I don't wanna show you much more because otherwise your brains might overload like mine almost did trying to set this video up. Um, but stay tuned for the next video, which will be up next week, and that will explain to you the benefits of using your planet card and how you can use them in combination with your creatures. I'll introduce activator cards and combiner cards, which are the only two other types of cards I haven't shown you yet. I'm also going to show you some more complicated resource cards because Galaxy's Gift was the only one I showed you in this video, and that's pretty basic. And then also, I'm actually going to show you how to win a game. I know, surprise, surprise. But yeah, that does actually help when you're playing a game of Chaos Galaxy. So yeah, stay tuned for that. For now, I hope what I showed you in this video actually makes sense to you. Um, let me know if there are any things you're still unclear with, and I'll try and clear that up in the comments. I'll leave the links to some battle videos as well in the description in case you want to learn more about the game. And yeah, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.
Bye.